Hello and welcome to the SRC Learning Essentials video series. This video is part of our tips on network and service router security. Today's topic is control plane queuing. Before we begin, this slide provides a brief overview about the SRC program for those of you who may not be familiar with it. You can learn more by visiting our website at networks.nokia.com src. In the following video we will discuss the control plane module, we will discuss the three different types of control plane queues and how they are used on the Nokia 7750 service router. Finally, we will configure and test this in a lab environment. All right, let's talk about the CPM. The CPM is considered the brains of the Nokia 7750 service router, and it is used to exchange routes to construct a network topology, referred to as the forwarding information base, or FIB. The CPM downloads the FIB to each input-output module, which is then used to perform data forwarding. The CPM also maintains states for multiple internal and external processes. An example would be BGP, neighbor states, OSPF adjacency states, are all maintained by the CPM. The CPM card has two major functions, CPU to perform computation and memory to hold control plane information. This is why it is very important that the CPM module is protected from attacks that can cause degradation of the service or even make it unavailable. Well, what is control plane queuing? Control plane queuing is used to protect the CPM CPU from denial of service attacks, which could be high rates of TCP messages, large amounts of routing protocol updates, or many ICPM packets, to name a few. Queues identify control plane traffic destined to the CPM and rate limits the traffic so that the CPU does not get overutilized. CPM queues, for instance, can have their committed burst size, maximum burst size, committed information rate, and peak information rate configurable. Traffic that does not conform to these parameters is dropped. The three queues we are going to talk about today are CPM queues, per protocol queues, and per peer queues. Traffic will be directed to only one of these three types of queues. As we can see from this slide, a line card receives packets on its physical ports and classifies them as either control or user data. The line card then forwards all control packets towards the CPM card for further processing. The security of the control plane directly impacts the data plane availability, which is why the control plane security is crucial in the network. Control plane traffic will first be classified by CPM filters if they are configured. MAC filters are processed first, then IP filters if there is a match in the policy. The CPM filters can classify control plane traffic to use CPM queues. If CPM filter does not find a match and the default action is to accept, then TCP traffic from a peer will get sent to the per peer queuing. Last but not least, if all the above queues do not match the per protocol default queue, which will process the control plane traffic before it reaches the CPU. Our first discussion on queues is the CPM queuing. CPM queuing allows an operator to restrict the resources allocated for certain traffic passed to the CPU. An operator can identify packets from a particular flow using CPM filters, and then direct these packets to a user-defined CPM queue. Each queue has a configurable buffer size and configurable rate limits that allow an operator to specify how much traffic from that particular flow is processed by the CPU. In this example, attack traffic is being sent to the Nokia 7750 service router, from a user. The input-output module accepts the traffic and sees that it is control plane traffic destined to this router. It then routes the control plane traffic to the CPM module. The CPM filter that is enabled checks all traffic being routed to the CPM. It has an entry for this unwanted traffic and the action is to take the unwanted traffic and send it to a configurable queue. The configured queue has PIR, CIR, MBS and CBS values that will rate limit the traffic to the CPU. This will protect the CPU from being overutilized from the unwanted traffic. Any traffic that does not conform to these rates and buffer settings will be dropped. Well, let's talk about our next queue, per peer queuing, which allocates a separate hardware queue on a per peer basis for each established TCP based session. Per peer queuing supports these TCP based protocols BGP, MSDP, targeted LDP, and LDP. CPM queues 2001 to 8000 are reserved for peer peer queuing. These queues are allocated for established TCP based sessions and are served in a round robin fashion. The per peer queuing mechanism provides fair access to CPM resources across all peers and ensures that a misbehaving peer does not starve out other peers. As we can see from the diagram, a router is attacking an Nokia 7750 service router with the BGP protocol using frequent updates. Traffic is sorted per peer and allocated its own queue. The queue is then served in a round-robin format 
Therefore, the queue will not starve out other queues. The next queuing type we want to discuss is the per protocol queue. The per protocol queue is default enabled on the Nokia 7750 service router. In this case, a single queue is allocated for each protocol. And control plane traffic received for that protocol from all peers is served by that queue before reaching the CPU. All right, let's look at our first use case where ICMP traffic from a router is starting a DOS attack. It will send 1,000 packets as fast as it can and each packet will be 1,000 bytes. Router R1 will be configured to rate limit the traffic with a rate of 100 kilobits per second and an MBS and CBS memory of 100 kilobytes for ICMP traffic. We will see how the traffic is rate limited to prevent overutilization of the CPU. Let's begin the exercise. Okay, this is our CPMQ's use case. We'll go to our attacking router where we'll do a ping to 10.10.10.1 10 10 10 to R1, a rapid count of 1,000 packets and a size of 1,000 bytes per packet. Let's start the ping. You can see that the ping is going successfully, no drop packets. And the ping was very fast. All right, let's go to R1. Configure. System. Security. And we go under our CPMQ. Do a Q. And then we'll see that we have a range of 33 to 2,000 for our queues, but we can configure our C CBS, MBS, and rate. We're going to use the first Q33, create, and we'll set our rate to 100 kilobits per second, our CBS to 100 kilobytes, and MBS to 100 kilobytes. Okay, do an info, we can look at our configuration that we already created, go back, put this under the CPM filter now. So we create our CPM filter. We can see that we have IPv filter, IPv6, and MAC to choose from. We're going to use our IP filter because we're going to match on an IPv4 address. Okay. And we'll go under entry 10. Use the low entry value for our first entry. And we'll go create and we're going to match on the source IP address of 20.20.20.0 slash 24 for the attacking router and we're going to match on the protocol ICMP and our back and we'll set our action to point to the Q33 that we just created. We'll go back, info, we can see what we created. And now we'll do a no shutdown to apply the Q. Now let's test the Q by going back to our attacking router and set the same ping that we did earlier. And we can see it's much slower. And now we're dropping packets because it does not conform to the Q. Okay, so we'll go back to our R1 and look at, at some counters on the show system security, CPM Q33, and we can see that it dropped packets and only passed 217 packets because they conformed to the queue. Okay, this is the use case where we have per peer queuing. Router R1 is connected to six BGP peers. We will enable per peer queuing and show how it automatically creates queues and allocates specific parameters for each TCP session. Okay, this is for the per peer queuing use case. Our router R1 is going to have six BGP neighbors with the TCP protocol. So we'll do show router BGP summary to show that it has six BGP neighborships. Okay, we'll do a show system security per peer queuing detail to show that per peer queuing is currently in disabled state. 
Now we'll enable it. Configure system security prepare queuing enter and now we'll show that it's working. Show system security prepare queuing and we can see all six BGP neighbor ships have their own CIR and PIR and statistics. Thank you for watching this Nokia video on control plane queuing. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia SRC course Network and Service Router Security. You can learn more about the complete four-day course and register for it from the SRC websites provided here. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.